Let's start. We're starting this. How I accidentally created Jay Diesel of Data Pipelines, and it's awesome. Okay, for those that don't know, it's from the Daily WTF. A man named Tom, a genius you wouldn't understand, he created Jay Diesel. Jay Diesel is a, an experience in which every SVN commit is a function, and a class is a construction of a series of SVN commits. And for you to be able to build the entire system, it has to walk the entire SVN thing, checking out each one and constructing the JavaScript class from a series of commits. So that, my friends, is Jay Diesel. And comments are executed as code, which I'm not even sure how it's possible. But anyways, let's keep on going. I ended up creating a data pipeline tool, which everything is programmed in JSON, becoming the J Diesel of data processing. And I promise it's actually quite awesome. Okay, so I'm super skeptical of this, but I'm so excited about this. And short answer, I, I, ju I just felt like it. Let's go. That is good. Good answer, because why not? It's a crazy challenge after all. However, the motivation for such a system was based on some work at, at Aviato, uh, where I was an ML engineer, was. Notice the keyword was, okay? Presented J Diesel was an engineer responsible for creating ML models that operated on a batch and streaming data. However, we hadn't implemented any robust tools for creating data pipelines, and I was, on, let's see, I was the only one tasked with addressing this issue. This might have been the point where I should have opted for a well-known data processing tool like Spark or Flink. But I came up, uh, but then came the challenge of training a, ser a serving SKU and ML. This SKU occurs when an ML model trained on one machine runs on another, potentially using a different programming language. This means data transformations needed to be replicated. For example, a training job might process data in Squeal and Python, while production might use Scala and Python. Replicating complex mathematical functions can quickly lead to slightly different results, rendering the ML model ineffective or essentially useless. Welcome to Costco. Forgot the turn off alerts. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, data transformation is hard, kids. Something, something Haskell peer function. Oh, camel. Therefore, I needed a way to ensure that transformations were aligned on every machine, regardless of the programming language or version they were running on. This sounds like a hard problem. This sounds like a hard problem. Okay, okay, the crazy idea. Let's hear about. Let's hear about Jay Diesel here. This is where my, uh, I had my crazy idea. As each line of data transformation can be represented with very little information. For instance, if we want to multiply the amount column by 10, we can represent a multiply column with constant value transformation and provide the column name amount and value 10. The same concept applies to adding two columns. We just need to know which two columns to use. Or for something more advanced like generating and embedding, we need to know which embedding model to use and for which column. I'm not happy right now it's just an, at this point we just wrote an interpreter we just wrote an interpreter at this point this is just an interpreter in the byte codes of jason in this way each transformation would be technically agnostic and therefore shareable across machines with this in mind i needed a way to describe these transformations this led to the use of jason meaning we actually program etl pipelines by defining jason and suddenly we ended up with jay's diesel pipelines name is famal transformation key sex equals value string value female depending on name sex from here on, I feel like there's an Austin Powers joke. Every time I see the word sex, I always go, yes, please, in my head, just due to stupid Austin Powers. What was that, Austin Powers 1 in 1999 or something like that? When was that? Every single time. From here on, from here, I could load the file into Python and run my transformations with my processing engine of choice. Not bad. From aligned, import file source, transformations equal to await. Okay, what is this? Is this, is this, is this, is this JavaScript? Is a wait a Python feature as well? Is there a wait in Python? What the hell is this? What language is this? Is this async Python? Okay. I was about to say, I keep like I keep looking at it and my brain keeps going, this is Python. Then I look at it and go, no, this is not Python. And then my brain thinks about it and I go, no, this is Python. And then I just can't like, I can't seem to like catch which one I'm looking at. Okay, transfer. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, po uh, Polar says Python. That's what I thought. So that's, that's what gave it away fully that, because you could actually convince me that this is JavaScript with underscores. Right? Like, you could convince me that this is JavaScript with underscores, and I guess there's no const or let here. That can't be doing global variables. That should have got, that should have got me. Should have got me. Um, anyways, all right, so let's look at this. Uh, oh, this is Nim, sir. This is Nim. Uh, all right, so we got some transformations. We have the input data. We transform it. Uh, feature view, Titanic. Uh, oh, damn. That, that sounds like it's going down. JSON was a bit too crazy. Really? Really? You, you, you ain't telling me that programming 
actions for a programming to take in Jason doesn't sound like it wouldn't get out of hand? How are errors handled? However, programming directly in JSON is not practical. It would lead to many frustrating formatting errors. There was no linting to, uh, to check that the file was semantically correct and no code completion to indicate which parameters should be set. Well, I mean, you could write your own LSP for this if you got really excited about it, but I still wouldn't suggest it. Therefore, I also set up a Python API providing site stroke type safe transformations, code completion, and then compiles everything to a JSON file. Feature view, one hot encode. Wow. <laughs> What is that? What is what kind of function is called one hot encode? I must not know Python, dog. Is this like normal Python? Do you call it some hot encoding? What kind of encoding are we talking about? This is making me horned up. One hot program, hot encode in your areas. Can I <laughs> sex hammer? <laughs> Can I find hot encodes in my area? Notice that we are not referencing columns or using strings, but rather using the fields themselves. That's kind of cool. Okay, okay, okay. Um. Uh, this uh, leads to, uh, to both code completion and type safety as linters can catch errors. Yeah, it was better than uh, what I thought. Another, let's see, although the JSON file contains a lot of information, it is still just a file. So what real use could it have? However, after, let's see, after some time, I realized that its value depended on the context in which it was used. Isn't that all value? Now, the file has, like, I mean, real talk, isn't that all value? Uh, now, the file has become my most valuable asset as it powered all the functions below. Data validation, li uh, data linear graphs, view data lineage. Data catalogs. You're welcome for that. For this mute. Debug specifics. Uh, feature transformation view data catalog continuing pipeline from cache states incremental data marginal materialization warning about data migration conflicts. I don't. I mean, I understand literally all these words individually, like all of them. I understand individually, and yet somehow none of it I understood. Uh, that is the only data engineering features. And let's see, that that is only the data engineering features, not taking into account the ML ops features. But there's so much more. Having a file that contains all these transformations, input features, et cetera, is a technology agnostic way to lead to an, or which has led to an incredibly flexible system. It has enabled me to move much faster than I previously thought possible. I do think this is pretty cool, that you build your files via Python. I thought that, that that's pretty clever. Can we agree that that's probably pretty dang clever right here? I like this. I like this. I, I, I do like that. That's super cool. I, you know, I, I love this. I, I love that you took a chance. You built something you wor weren't sure of, and it, it met a business problem. Now, generally, I'm very skeptical of a JSON file describing how a program should execute. In general, it is great until it is horrifying, right? Can we all agree to that? If you haven't had enough experience in the world, this has like been a road that I have traveled down many times in which always has the same ending. Great until it's one of the worst decisions I have ever made in my entire lifetime. So... Right now, it sounds like you're loving it, which I think is great. And I think there are probably a set of problems in which JSON does work. I mean, hell, your VS Code configuration is all driven via JSON. So, I mean, it can happen. There, there can be, you know, how things should behave with JSON, but I think it's very difficult. I think it's a uh, Jismal is very difficult language to use. And so this is super cool. I, I love this idea. It's not J Diesel though. I will say this is not J Diesel because remember one of the key ingredients of J Diesel is that J Diesel requires history to construct the item. Now, if you would have had each data transformation as a git commit and then a series of git commits hashes as how you execute the data pipeline then my friend then my friend you have created git j diesel no comments though j gitson yeah j gitson yeah they're, they're, yeah exactly it, it, it json is not great for programmatic stuff because in the end programmatic stuff always needs you to have like hey i want to add one well now you have to program in this feature in json to say hey add one that's why there's that that shout out in the beginning this constant add add two columns subtract two columns subtract with constant do 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 do, do. like it just keeps on you know what i mean there's there's quite a bit yeah do a loop throw an error how should errors be handled should you retry specific errors right there's like there's a lot of stuff you have to consider whenever doing it, but I love subtract pre-watched. <laughs> but I do, I mean, I, I am just super stoked that he, that he built this and it's, and it's working and it's going great. That is super cool. You know, because sometimes, sometimes a novel approach to a problem can make a really great outcome. Because remember, all of the things you hear as like the, the de facto standards and everything 
at one point was a novel approach. React was a novel approach to front-end development, and it's now considered the de facto standard to front-end development. You know, you got to take a risk every now and then. Uh, Lua is better uh, is a better DSL. I think Lua is the best DSL. If you were to create a DSL or you needed a way to execute stuff dynamically or be able to download scripts and be able to execute them on the fly, I highly recommend considering Lua embedding. It's not extremely difficult. Yeah. It's very, very cool. The name. It's the J. Diesel again. The gen. Look at that. I'm the day G- uh, we, we've we had it. This was the closest we've come to J. Diesel, and I'm I appreciate I appreciate that. Now let's get it let's let's get it into Subversion, specifically Tortoise SVN. And let's make this happen. I think we got something going here. Okay, you're 99 percent way there. Let's make it a hundo. Okay, we can make this a hundred. A gen. <laughs> 